Once GarageBand launches, you will create a new song by clicking the plus button in the upper right hand corner. Once you do that, just navigate here and choose the audio recorder. Click on the microphone. Once you are in GarageBand, then you'll start moving down to the track area to start recording loops. In the upper left hand corner, you'll see a little button that looks like a brick wall that's a group of three tracks with their recording bubbles beside them. Once you are down at the track level, you will click on the loop button, which is in the upper right hand corner. It looks like a Hot Wheels loop-de-loop -loop icon. And then here you will see at the top of the screen, there are tabs for Apple Loops, Files, and Music. You want to make sure that stays on Apple Loops. Up here is a search field that you can type terms into. And I'm just going to go ahead and type, for example, country. And when I hit a search, you will notice that, unfortunately, it brings up absolutely no loops. Let's try another search. Let's try a rock. Here we have a good number of loops that actually are connected to the rock style in some form. And you can select any one of these that you're interested in and drag it into your songs. For example, I'll click on this 70s Latin rock piano, and we should be able to hear that. Uh, since I don't hear it, I'm unplugging and replugging my headphones. I should reset them. And now I'll tap that again so we can hear. I'll tap again to stop. If I decide that I like that loop and would like to use it in my composition, I just tap and hold down on it. And then I drag the bubble down to this part of the window and drop it in. You will notice that it put eight bars of this music into my composition. You'll notice that the metronome is also playing and you hear it clicking up at the top. If you don't want to hear the metronome, you can click the blue metronome button and turn it off. It'll go gray or white. I'm going to expand that track a little bit by dragging it to the right, tap on the piano, and when the delete button comes up, I'll choose delete there. And right, I'm going to go back to loops now and show you some additional searches here. You can search by instruments. And over here, I'm just tapping on vocals. When I hit the angelic vocals, okay, those angels sound a little bit spooky, so I'm going to skip that one. I'm going to scroll down a little bit here and see if I can find a sound that I would like. Okay, I could conceive of using that in my background. So I just went into instruments and tapped on vocals. I'm tapping the X up above to clear all of those search terms. I'm tapping on instruments again, and you see that I can search by bass, slide guitar, guitar, synths, strings, electric piano, mallets, all drums, percussion, shakers, congas, tambourines, bongos, woodwinds, and vocals. I click on congas. I just typed on Cuban timba conga number one. And once again, if you want to use that, you just drag it down into your composition. I'm going to tap the X button in the upper left hand corner again to clear my search. In addition to instrument searches, you can do searches by genres. And here's a list of the genres that GarageBand has identified. I'm going to tap also on descriptors. And here's a list of descriptors that you can search. So tap on any of those and you'll get a group of loops that are related to that. You can clear your searches with the X button. I'm going to type a special term up here called Dimbo. It originated in the Dominican Republic in the 1990s. It's an interesting new and contemporary style of popular music. The music itself is a slightly laid back, but since this is all instrumental, this would be useful. Click on the Dimbo acoustic guitar and let you hear a little bit of that. Okay, here's the Dimbo electric bass. Okay, actually I kind of like the two of those and I think that I might like to use them in my composition. I'm going to click on the Dimbo bass and then just drag it down into my song, drop it in there. And I need more screen space so I'm sliding that to the left. That only created eight bars of music for me. I'm going to click the plus button in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to tap on the eight bars automatic, turn it off automatic because I already know that I want exactly 40 bars. And the bass has been added and looped to my song now. If I rewind and press play, 
There's the base. All right, I'll go back to my loops here. The same search is still up. I'm going to pull that acoustic guitar down and drag it down here as well. And that has been added to my song. And I'm going to tap on loops once again. Come back up here and see if I might find some other background sound. Uh, here's something called synth mallets. Okay, yes, that's a nice background sound. I'm going to tap on that and drag it into the composition. And now I've got a pretty nice background track. By the way, I created an empty vocal track over here. I could record myself into that track later if I wanted to, but this is just going to become an instrumental piece. Okay, at this point I need some additional melodic materials to bring into the song. So I'm going to go back to my loops, scroll through here, and see if I find something that looks like it's melodic. Here's something called Denbo Panpipe. Okay, I do like that also. I'm going to tap on that and drag it down to the composition. Put measure 5. Uh, that didn't succeed, so I'm going to try that again. Denbo Panpipes, drag it down and drop it into the song. So now what I have is an introduction. Oh, and I don't think I need that much of the pan pipes. I'm just going to do eight bars of the pan pipes. I have a little bit more than eight there. But I might actually use that eight bars two times. So I'm going to copy that and come over here to this bar, eight bars later, and paste it in. And this, here I'll put that there and that there. Okay. Maybe I don't have my bars counted correctly. This looks like a introduction here. And then this looks like the verse section. at this point we need a chorus so let me go back into my loops and see if I might find something that looks like it might serve as a chorus okay I just happened upon this uh, synth lead sound let's see what that sounds like okay I could use that as a chorus so I'm gonna drag and drop that into my song I will drag this down to this location I also don't need as much of that as I have, so I'm going to drag the loop that long, tap on it, copy it, come over here to measure 17, moving my playhead there, uh, make sure I've selected this track, tap on it, tap again till I get a menu, choose paste, and now I've got a introduction, a verse, a chorus, a verse, a chorus, and that's all I've gotten so far. Okay, I'm going to go back up to my loops and look and see what other kinds of stylistically consistent materials I can find to add to this composition. And as I do, what I find is that I have this noise thing here. Okay, that actually looks like it would, it would work nicely in an introduction measure and then maybe even as a closing measure. So I'm going to drag that down in here, drop it into the first bar. Now for this, I'm going to take a slightly different strategy. I'm going to move my playhead here to bar 5. Tap on that track until I get a menu. Choose the split button and then just drag the scissors across that to split that track. So I now have two parts, this part and this part. I'm also going to come here to the very end of this composition and then tap here again. Hit the split button and drag that across that. Tap the middle section until I get a menu and tap delete. And so now what I have is a introduction with that little rising up to a crash uh, with the symbols, a verse, a chorus, a verse, a chorus, and then another section that looks like it really needs another verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Instead of copying this one again, uh, which I could very easily do, just drop it in over here. I would prefer to find some different melodic material for this. Verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus is a little bit too repetitive. So I'm going to leave that uh, blank. I will go back in there, use the same uh, different loops. Uh, okay, I believe that this little ending piece over here should end by itself. I'm going to select all three of those tracks. 
tap until I get a menu, I choose the split button, and split the three of those tracks at that location. Then I'm going to tap down here to clear the selection, tap and drag a box around those three, tap them until I get a menu, and hit the delete button. And now you will see that I have everything except my verse and chorus in the final section. Okay, we're getting kind of close though, so here I'm going to rewind, press... <laughs> So let's just switch over here and hear the ending. Here's the accompaniment and then the wrap up. And that's just a fine ending for what I am trying to do here. Now, at this point, I would still need to compose this section with all the empty parts, but this is about the thickness of the texture that you should be looking to build in your song. And I am going to do one other quick thing here. I think I have a little bit too much of the background sounds in here, though in order to balance those, I'm going to turn those down a little bit and leave my verse and chorus sounds, the melodic materials, at about the same level. The little noise track was about the level that it needed to be, so, but if I felt like I needed adjustments, I could make adjustments to it there. Okay, at this point, you'll save your GarageBand song and export it as you normally would. Uh, we will talk more about the criteria for this assignment in class, but what I'd like you to do is to create a song similar to this one. You are forbidden from creating this exact song, but you may indeed use the Dimbo style if you wish, or you may also use some other style uh, that you can find. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate your joining us today.